This video is about the law of diminishing returns and returns to scale. So a reminder, first of all, that the difference between the short run and the long run in economics is not about the time period that's elapsed, but it's about the variability of the factors of production. So in the short run, at least one of a firm's factors of production is fixed. And the idea with diminishing marginal returns is that if a firm increases its inputs of one factor of production whilst holding other inputs of the other factors of production fixed, then what's going to happen is the additional output produced by adding more and more of the variable factor will start to decrease. And that's what we call diminishing marginal returns. So imagine you were running a bakery You've got one shop, you've got four ovens, and you've got two members of staff. Now you add a third worker, you might get quite a big increase in the amount of bread or cakes you're able to make in your bakery. You add a fourth, and you still get quite a big increase in that output. You add a fifth worker, all working in that shop at the same time, still only four ovens, still only one shop. The output still increases, but probably by a bit less than before. You add a sixth worker, again, that additional output they can add is going to be relatively limited and certainly lower than when you added the third, the fourth, the fifth member of staff. And this is diminishing marginal returns. And they happen in the short run, it's specifically a short run concept because the key here is that the shop and the number of ovens are fixed. If you could increase those as well, then you wouldn't experience these diminishing marginal returns. So the difference in the long run is that all factor inputs can be varied. And in the long run, we see returns to scale, which are the change in output achieved by a firm as a result of a proportionate change in all of those inputs. So now the bakery can grow by opening new stores, buying more ovens and employing more staff as well. And in this situation, it becomes a bit less certain as to what the impact of those increasing inputs is going to be on the level of output achieved. So they can be increasing returns to scale. And this would be when an increase in output is greater in proportion to that change in inputs. And that could be seen on a downward sloping long run average cost curve because that output is increasing more than the increase in inputs as you go along the quantity of output axis. And so the cost per unit is likely to be coming down as quantity of output increases. A firm might experience decreasing returns to scale. So that's when the increase in output is smaller in proportion to the change in inputs. And that could be seen on an upward sloping long run average cost curve. So here the output is increasing by less than that increase in inputs. So the cost per unit is likely to be rising. Or they might experience constant returns to scale. So that's when an increase in output is exactly proportionate to that change in inputs. And there you would have a horizontal long run average cost curve because of that increasing output being proportionate to the increase in inputs. So the cost per unit remains unchanging as the quantity of output increases. Now it's very, very common to confuse uh, decreasing marginal returns with decreasing returns to, to scale. Um, Important to note that returns to scale is a long run concept and those diminishing marginal returns is a short run concept. So diminishing marginal returns happen in the short run and these decreasing returns to scale can happen in the long run depending on how output is responding to those changing inputs. There is a direct link between returns to scale and economies and diseconomies of scale. So we looked at these in lots of detail in the first year of the course, in including the reasons for why they happen. But as a reminder here, economies of scale are when an increase in scale of production leads to a fall in long run average costs and diseconomies of scale are when an increase in the scale of production leads to a rise in long run average costs. 
and they usually mean that we get this u-shaped long run average cost curve because as a firm grows from relatively low levels of output they experience economies of scale and falling long run average costs and very often at higher levels of output they more likely start to dominate with diseconomies of scale and that causes long run average costs to start rising so giving us this u-shaped long run average cost curve now the point where those long run average costs are minimized or the lowest level of output at which they're minimized is called the minimum efficient scale of production so the typical shape of the long run average cost curve is this u shape as we've said but we may see an L-shaped long run average cost curve as well. And that just means that diseconomies of scale never really come to dominate those economies of scale. Um, and the long run average costs keep falling, but then just level off across higher levels of output. And this is often the case in industries where scale is really, really important to production. So industries like phone networks or the manufacture of commercial airlines, where costs can be kept down much more effectively at much higher levels of output. So the final thing maybe just to say here is that we said there's a direct link between returns to scale and economies and diseconomies of scale, but they are not the same thing. So returns to scale, remember, refer to how output responds to changing inputs in the long run and economies and diseconomies of scale are the impact of changes in the scale of production on that long run average cost curve.